been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. It's a really nice day out. I'm trying to beat a storm that's supposed to be coming in. So uh, like normal, I'll try to rush this. But I want to address a problem that we have with our RV. And that is the 30 amp cord. Um, it's from 1992 and it's seen its fair share of duty. The post inside of the cord that actually plug into the socket at the campsite are starting to get a little loose and they move around. Now, if you remember from our last camping trip, we actually popped the 30 amp breaker at the campsite, but we were running a refrigerator, the hot water tank element, the air conditioning, and there was some other electrical things going on inside that we were pretty far up there as far as amps that we were pulling. But I noticed that the cord was really hot right at the plug and all those posts that stick out of the plug, they moved around quite a bit. So today I'm going to replace that plug. As you can see, I got a couple of boxes from Amazon. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. I'm gonna unbox these and we'll take a look at them. And of course these items, I'll have the links down below for both of them but I'm gonna show you how to install it also. You're gonna need a utility razor most likely whenever you start doing this peeling back of the extension cord. But I wanna look at the product in here. It's a Camco part number 55245 and it's a 30 amp plug. I chose to get one with a handle on it and this will be a nice change from what I have. Now I just wanted to let you know that you may wanna take in consideration where your cord gets stored in your camper. If you have a small port that only handles a small cord, this may not work for you because this is pretty big. All right, and here's the adapter, the 15 amp. Uh, it'll allow you to plug in a 30 amp cord and then plug it into a normal household outlet. Uh, this is a part number 55223. And both of these products, this is a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. I guess the fact that it was yellow and molded, I thought that it was going to be kind of uh, lightweight or something. But uh, this feels pretty substantial. So let's go ahead and look at the cord now that we're going to replace. All right, so if you have an older camper, you pretty much have this same setup. Again, this is from 92. And you can see what I was talking about. See how these posts like to move around inside there. I'm, I've seen ones that are really bad. I've seen ones that are missing parts of it. You can see that this one is cracked right in this area here. It's just time for this to get replaced. And this is the adapter, which I like the fact that it was uh, like a 90 degree there, but it's just as bad. It doesn't fit on here like it used to, and uh, it moves around a lot. And again, when we were camping, when we popped that breaker, I came out and these things were like really pliable. I mean, I could almost squeeze them together and touch them. Now, I will tell you that I did take some safety precaution because I still have my battery uh, connected to my camper and I didn't want to risk any kind of feedbacks. So I shut off all the breakers that power everything electrical through this cord. That way I don't have any chance of a feedback situation, which I seriously doubt that there would be, but you never know. And it's just a good idea to be safe because I hate getting shocked. Let me go ahead and start whittling away at this. What I'm gonna have to do is uh, clip the wires um, straight off. I'm gonna leave a little bit just so I can test the colors to make sure that this is wired correctly. And then whenever I do the new one, I'm gonna make sure that I wire it correctly also. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. Okay, so you can see what I did here. All I used was a pair of uh, tin snips. I cut the cord, and again, make sure that you don't have any power going to this whatsoever, which I don't think that you should, but better be safe than sorry, especially guys with solar panels. And then all I did was just uh, place a slice, peeled this off, same with this one. And I'll have to adjust this length. I'm not sure exactly how much I'm gonna need for that other plug yet. All this is is three wires. So don't be intimidated by all this stuff. This is just insulation, that's all it is. This is some sort of a uh, fiberglass strand 
wrapped with some paper. What I'll do is I'll trim away all these little paper pieces to where I'm left with these three wires. I'm going to take my meter and I'm going to trace these three wires back to their appropriate plugs to make sure that it's connected the way that I'm going to connect up the new one because I believe the new one is color coded correctly but I just want to be sure. All right so I got my meter out and what I'm going to do is run the green and find out where it's at. Green wire or gray wire, I'm colorblind, I believe it's green, <laughs> will uh, be this round post. All right, so the white, looking at it with the round post at the top, the white is to the left, and obviously then the black is to the right. So to make it to where I can remember this, I'm actually going to write this down. Okay, opening up this package, uh, looks like there's some instructions that are in here. And it basically says the same thing as what my drawing does. If you look at the drawing, it says green, white, black. Not very good drawing, I might add, but looks like an angry alien. Put a frown on him. Ugh. So they have the same thing uh instructions for a 30 amp plug nema travel trailer 30p for you canadians it's got it in french also They're showing you how to trim this and the lengths which is really great it tells you step by step what you need to do everything's phillips heads in here we'll take this apart and show you what it looks like inside all right so i went ahead and measured my cord it's 0.64 and i find down here in the chart that it says for cord sizes 0.59 to 0.75 in diameter use the strain relief clamp with insert oriented as shown in figure five the small cords it goes like this for the medium sized cords it goes like this that's what i have and for the large cords it goes like this so they explain that in the instructions just make sure you read the instructions and measure your cord okay what i have to do now is cut the cord to match the lengths that they're describing here and peel back the casing to show the copper and then we'll go ahead and place it inside these holders and tighten everything down so let me go ahead and trim it back like they show and uh, we'll see what it looks like all right so we've got all our wires trimmed back what you got is three inches from where the black stops on the sheathing for the entire cord to the tip of this one then you cut it back a half an inch and then on these, from the black sheathing to the tip is an inch and three quarter on both of these. And then of course a half inch sheared back to show the wiring there. And if you look as far as placement then at that point, looks like these cables are gonna have plenty of room to go around and hook in the connectors where they need to be at. Everything's kind of like color coded. Uh, this is a light colored screw kind of a goldish color that's where the white goes this is a black screw that's where the black wire goes and this screw here is like a green tint to it so that's where the green wire goes now this is where people might have a hard time or haven't done this before might not know you can push out these connectors and then connect all the screws and then once they're tight you can push it all back in again that way you're not fighting with this center post and trying to connect it um, this is the way I do it. I just push them out partially and then leave them. So we'll go ahead and get this all buttoned up and I'll show you what it looks like at that point. All right, you can see this is what it's supposed to look like. All the connectors are very tight uh, as far as these screws are concerned and then they're all pushed back in place. Now it's just a matter of me reinserting this cover uh, with the strain relief, tightening everything down. But we'll have to say that I would have liked to seen more screws that held the two halves together. I'd like to see a screw here and a screw here maybe, but oh well, other than that, I love the quality of this so far. Okay, all that's left now is this strain relief and you can see it's just about right. So I'll go ahead and uh, insert these machine screws into here. There's nuts that are built into this and then tighten it down and uh, I'll show you what it looks like all finished. Here's the finished product. You can see it's all tightened down and looks good feels really solid and then of course this this is heavy this is almost heavier than that end the adapter will plug right into the cord i now have the ability to plug this into my house so there you go the plug how to install it not hard to do at all i'm going to put the links down below for both of these 
The instructions are very clear. It's very simple. What you need to do this is a pair of side cutters, something to cut the cord initially, a Phillips screwdriver, a utility razor, and that's about it. Uh, once you get it apart and stripped and all the length, it's just taking a Phillips screwdriver and tightening everything down. So not hard to do, something that anybody can do. So if you like this video, click like or subscribe. Hopefully I'll get more on just like this, and I hope to see you guys out there. Thanks, bye.